I'm attempting to build a camper van. Not just any camper van, but a camper van from a very rusty sprinter that I purchased for next to nothing. Well, relatively when you compare prices with what Mercedes sprinters are going for. And I'll try to turn it into something that looks like this. These things go for over six figures new. I want to try to do it for under $10,000 Canadian. But that's not the catch. The catch is I have never built a camper van before and I really don't have much experience doing this stuff. But I do like tools and I'm kind of a hoarder when it comes to tools. For the most part I don't know what I'm doing but there's YouTube and there's discussion forums, there's Reddit um, and there's just learning as I go along. So I thought I'd document this whole process and share it with you guys. So, a bit about my story so far. I started to find the minimalist idea more appealing as the years went on. But I also liked my projects, and my projects means tools and a workshop or a garage. Some good deal of space to support all the tools that I use in my projects and the projects themselves. And those two ideas don't really go so well together. So I figured and I thought of a camper van lifestyle as a sort of potential temporary minimalist lifestyle where for a couple months out of the year I can head out and live a very simple life. And then when I'm ready to work on a project I head back to my shop and I work on a project. So back to the van. I did a good deal of research and I settled on a Mercedes Sprinter as the cargo van I would be using for the following reasons. It can get pretty big with the extended version, which is what I did end up getting. I've got two more points to make, but first let me pause so we can appreciate the rust that we're seeing. That was not part of the plan. In fact, when I purchased this, it looked pretty good. I mean, I saw some rust spots. Um, but all the paneling that was on top and on the inside didn't show any signs of rust, at least to me since I don't have much experience. And a few days into it when I started removing the panels, I saw this. It's terrible. But again, I got the van for next to nothing and I'll break down the costs of the project so far. Now back to the points of why I got the Sprinter. It also has pretty good fuel economy as far as cargo vans go and the engine itself, if it's well kept, can go to over 1 million kilometers, which is pretty cool. It took a couple months of searching to find this van. I must have looked at a total of 30 vans and the cheapest I found prior to this one was about 7,000 Canadian. I saw this one listed for a few thousand, went to see it, it looked pretty banged up it wasn't starting, so I offered the guy 1700 on the spot. So I'm getting the Dodge Sprinter, what year is it? 2007. 2007. He took it. I figured, you know, if it's a really terrible deal, I can part it out and recover some money. I'm just on that breaking point. I think if I didn't have an interest in how to weld and how to machine body panels, I would probably have scrapped this van. The reason I do have an interest is I do like projects, but I also have a 69 Mustang which you can kind of see in the background that is in pretty rough shape and I do plan to restore it one day so I figured what I learned here I can transfer over to that. So back to the van. After boosting it, it did start, but it was running very poorly and the engine was barely going. But I was able to drive it to my mechanic with temporary plates and I had him inspect it. The list of problems was so long they had to write on the back of their paper. But overall there were no critical problems. So I started working on the engine. It had about 6 error codes and I was able to bring it down to just 2 by cleaning out some sensors and rebuilding part of the turbo. Something which I had no idea how to do but kinda learned as I went along. Along the way I gathered many parts that I'd need for the camper van so I'll break down what I have so far. I purchased 2 Tesla batteries I bought for another project. They were about 1500 each from a local shop that had a salvaged Tesla. I will be using one of them for the camper. So with the van and the battery, I'm sitting at around 3200 so far. Then I spent about $100 in parts to fix the turbo and then I purchased 3 solar panels that will sit on the roof which were about 120 each on average. So 360 on top of that. 
I also purchased a $250 solar charger, controller, and some other electrical parts such as breakers and cables, which came out to about $100. Most of these parts I got off Amazon and a couple off AliExpress. I'm sitting at a total of 4000 so far. I still got a long way to go. First things first is to remove this rust. In the next couple videos, I'll be going over that process, and most of these videos are recorded from a first-person head-mounted cam you probably saw in the first video clip here. I'll be releasing episodes as I go along with the process, and I hope to continue documenting after I finish the build and begin to travel. So I have a couple challenges. One, I have to keep it under $10,000. Two, I have to do this with next to no experience. And three, is probably the toughest one and I haven't talked about it yet. But if you know about Canadian winters, they start early and they're pretty rough. So I need to be out of here before this one begins. It's currently the end of August, so I've got about two to three months, I'm hoping, before it gets really cold. So that's my deadline. I need to finish everything within about two and a half months. I really have no clue if I'll be able to do this, but I'm gonna try.